So if you've ever built a system or come across someone building a system or just looked into computer parts in general, chances are you've come across a CPU socket. But what is a CPU socket? Well, to put it very simply, a CPU socket is just a way of connecting a CPU to the actual motherboard. Now, both AMD and Intel make their own types of sockets, and today we'll just be covering the AMD side, as it'll probably take more than five minutes to actually explain what the actual differences are between the two and all those kind of things. And with that being said, we'll do an actual follow-up to this video on the Intel side, just in case you want to find out about the Intel side. So we'll start with the AMD side. There's about six sockets out there to actually choose from. They're ranging from things like AM1, AM3, AM3+, AM2+, FM2, FM2+, and there are a few more out there. But we return the question, why do we need six? And why do we need so many? Why don't we just have one single socket. Well, it would be a lot simpler just to have one socket to do the job, but there's multiple different platforms AMD supports, as well as multiple different sockets, chipsets, generation SKUs, and all these other things that add up to just one socket just wouldn't be able to support them all. Just like Intel has the 1150X as well as the 2011, AMD does the same just with a few different letters. So for AMD, the FM series sockets are for APU systems and sort of the mainstream type of systems out there. There's not as high-end chips available for the FM socket, but they're still great with really strong integrated graphics and really strong CPUs. Then we have the AM sockets, which are dedicated CPUs with no integrated GPU at all, making them their own high-end chip. Now, this is like AMD's response to the 2011 kind of platform that we see on Intel, which is for the enthusiasts. There's no onboard video supported on any of the motherboards on the AM side, so you'll have to do without any onboard video. But again, if you're a high-end gamer or high-end overclocker, you probably aren't going to use one anyway. Also things on something like the FM side, you can go ahead and use an FM2 CPU on an FM2 Plus motherboard, but not the other way around. So it's really nice to see that AMD is still supporting you if you got a different one. Also the differences between all those different sockets altogether is really pin count, pin arrangement, as well as voltage and different chipsets and all those kind of things. Now we can get a lot deeper into that, but it will just blow out this whole video, making it a kind of long video. And without going into too much more detail, that's about it. The FM side is for the mainstream or people who just want a decent computer without having to worry about much else. And the AM side is for the overclockers and the enthusiasts out there. Now, obviously, you don't have to be an enthusiast to have an AM series and you don't have to be a mainstream person to have an FM. Those are just the two examples I could come up with as what Intel comes up with just as a comparison there. Now, obviously, again, we could go deeper into the different chipsets and the CPUs and all those different wirings and the voltages and the pin arrangement, all those kind of things but the problem is it would probably just confuse you even further if you want to know more we're going to have an article written up on cpmodel.com for you guys to go ahead and read that will cover both amd and the intel side so with that why not check out cpmodel.com we have a bunch of great articles there that are being written and there's kind of a few there but there'll be definitely a lot more to come and give us a like or dislike if you liked or disliked this video let me know if that was detailed enough or not detailed enough if you do have some more questions i'll be more than happy to do a follow-up and give us a sub if you like this kind of content and I'll see you guys next time for another video. Thank you for watching.